I'd like to introduce you to my new best friend. This is the Ambernick RG35XXSP. Don't tell my Miu Mini Plus, but it's kind of taken its place as being my go-to device that when I'm out running errands or whatnot, it's in my pocket and I really, really, I really like this thing. So stick around for a review. We're gonna do some custom firmware options and I'll let you know which one I actually settled on. So uh, it might surprise you. This is fun. This is a fun device. With the H700 processor that this is running, you can get pretty good performance out of it. You're not gonna be able to get all of the PSP and 64 or Dreamcast games to play on here, but you might be surprised what you can get playing on here. Also, thank you to Lit NXT for sending me this device for the review. As always, they did not see this review before it was published. All opinions are my own and no money was exchanged in any way. While we're at it, let's check out their website listing. Here you can see that they have the four colors and it's also listed at $74.99 for the 64 gig games or no games options. That's pretty cool. But to sweeten the deal, let's use my code RFT10 for 10% off of your purchase. And Lit NXT has free shipping, so that isn't an extra expense. Thank you, Lit NXT. So in my first impressions video, I mentioned testing out custom firmware. If you wanna see the stock operating system, definitely check out my first impressions video on it. So let's get to the custom firmware options. In this video, I'm gonna go over three different custom firmware. There are others out there like MinUI that I'm not gonna go over in this video, but I will leave a link in the description below. If you are a minimalist at heart, I would definitely recommend checking out MinUI by Sean Inman. He does a great job with that OS. Here I have three different SD cards, the updated or modified stock OS, Newly and Moo OS. This isn't a tutorial by any means, but rather just my experience with each of them. I will leave links in the description below on installation tutorials. Let's start with the first custom firmware. This is called Modified Stock. Like I've mentioned many times before, I'm not the biggest fan of Anbernix Stock OS. It's definitely usable, but it's just not that nice to look at. Here with the Modified Stock, you have a couple more wallpapers and icon packs that you can select. The other thing that I like is the developer put all the tweaks in one spot and made them a little more accessible to the user. Another neat feature is that you can either start clean with a new SD card, or you can use the card that it came with and just add the modified version on top of the stock OS. I feel like that's a cool feature for the new user that isn't ready to commit to the other two options that I will go over. I know I usually recommend using a fresh SD card and yes, you should definitely do that, but maybe you wanna keep the stock OS card around for, I don't know, a rainy day or to swap between custom firmwares. Also, I showed this in my first impressions video, but this definitely bears repeating. This is how you can do a quick shutdown when you close the lid. And that is a feature that I don't really see on either of the other two custom firmwares. You can get to it in Newly, sort of. There's a different way that you have to do it in MuOS that it just sort of shuts down. But pay attention to this and it's pretty easy to set up and it works really well, as you can see here. Notice how I'm gonna go back into a game and you will see that I started up and then I just closed the lid. The genius thing with this quick shutdown is that when you close the lid and it powers off, when you turn it back on, you have to press the power button, it actually goes right back into your game. Pay attention to the LED indicator and you can see that, there you go, bam, it's off. And there, my screen is off, that's it. It's pretty awesome. Next, let's jump into Newly. It's probably the one that I would actually recommend for anyone, especially new users. Now, everyone has been talking about this custom firmware because it's actually pretty awesome. It also may look very familiar to you because it has an emulation station front end, which is very easy to navigate through. A few cool features that I enjoy are that you are able to update it over Wi-Fi. You can scrape any box art over Wi-Fi. 
that you want to take advantage of with Screen Scraper. And you can also check out Portmaster. It's a small collection, but it's there. And Pico 8. Well, sort of. The one thing that I personally am not a huge fan of is that this operating system does not have native Pico 8 Explore. So you can't access the Pico 8 website and find new games right when you're starting to use New Link. I'll backtrack. There technically is a way, but it's incredibly difficult and I will leave a link in the description below. I would definitely recommend maybe not trying to use Splore if you aren't as tech savvy. You are still able to get your favorite Pico 8 games on the SP. All you have to do is download them from the Pico 8 website and then put them on the card under ROMs and then under Pico 8. I wish it was a little easier to get Splore to work on here. Hopefully there will be an update that fixes that so that we don't have to do this weirdo work around. Next we have Moo OS. This is short for Mustard OS, but I don't think they go by Mustard anymore, which is sad because that's kind of neat. Everybody just refers to them as Moo OS. So this is a neat custom firmware. It's a little more simplified in appearance than Newly is. I kind of like it because this is a little bit different than the emulation station look of Newly. Now, a few things I will mention here. After you get the OS up and running, you will have to add your own file structure. Normally, after you flash a custom firmware, you can pop the SD card into the device and it populates all the folders. Then you just eject the card from the device, pop it back in your computer, and you can just drag and drop all your ROM games files onto your designated folders. This operating system doesn't have any folder structure for your ROMs at all. So that can be considered either a good thing or a bad thing. But however you have your ROMs stored on your computer, just make it simple and you can make your own, you can create your own file structure. Another thing, this doesn't come with an easy way of getting box art. That's one feature that it's lacking. So if you are used to just turning on Wi-Fi on the device and putting in your Scream Scraper account information and hitting start and walking away for a little while, you can't do that on here, unfortunately. You can get box art, but it's a little difficult. You can either scrape it on your computer and then import it and you can manually drop it in, which means you have to obtain the box art in some sort of fashion. So that part is a little tricky, but I was able to get a little bit of box art on here. Some systems I have and some systems I left the box art just to show you. There are two huge things that I love about Moo OS. Number one, it has Portmaster and it has the biggest selection of Portmaster games out there of all these lists. So if you are big into playing Portmaster, you might want to look into this custom firmware. Number two, Pico 8. This process of getting Pico 8 on the custom firmware is pretty simple in comparison to the previous custom firmware, especially talking about getting native Splore on here. Also, if you want to change the core of a system, go to your content or system lists and select a system. Then you can hover over any game and hit select. It will then take you to a system list. You find the corresponding system and hit A. Then it will give you core options, which you can arrow down and press A to make the change to that core. I am happy that this is very easy to change. I personally like the Pico Drive core for Sega Master System, and it's usually not the default core. So sometimes my Master System games sound super goofy, and that just makes me sad. This is also the way that you wanna go in and select Pico 8. So once you get to this menu, you can actually hit Pico 8 and click on external. The Moo OS instructions on the website, they're not completely user-friendly, I would say. It, it feels like they left a couple steps out of there and didn't quite completely explain it. I feel like they need screenshots, but I was able to figure it out after a little bit of time. So I just wanna say a big thank you to Lit NXT for sending me this device to review. It is a blast to play this device 
like I said, and I probably said many times, I'm a giant fan of this. I didn't think I was going to be this big of a fan, but if I am, and I never had an original Game Boy SP, I mean, if you had one, you should get one of these. Also, the custom firmware that I ended up sticking with, for the time being, has been Moo OS. Moo OS, I don't know, it just struck me as, even though it's a little more complicated with a couple things, I, the big thing for me was Pico 8. Pico 8 uh, Native Explorer. I love Pico 8. I, I know I gush about it a lot, but it's, it's awesome. It's such an awesome system. And to play it on this little tiny screen and to have it portable with you in your pocket all the time, it's part of the reason why I was jamming out on my Miu Mini Plus for so, for so long, because all I had to do was connect it to Wi-Fi, and there you go. I have Splore, and also having a really large selection of ports, it actually got me back into playing ports. Moo OS kind of almost has an Onion OS feel to it, I like that it's something different. So, you know, Newly is Emulation Station. It's an Emulation Station front end, which is great because, every, you know, it's awesome and it works well. But I was looking for something different and Moo OS just kind of struck me. I actually found this theme. Um, I, <laughs> normally, I normally don't go for a, any sort of uh, comic book or Star Wars theme but it was really simplistic. It just goes, it scrolls through and it changes the picture and it's, you know, just ever so slightly. It's Star Wars, but it's also simple. Once I saw that, and there's a couple other themes that were pretty cool as well. It's just neat. And I really like how the community is kind of getting involved with it. They're making different themes. I hope that eventually they will make the themes actually part of the operating system or at least that you can connect to wi-fi and you can download them like i always say it really just kind of comes down to what you're comfortable with so if one of these different custom firmwares or even the modified stock operating system i mean now that the modified stock i really like that background the background itself you know would be enough to keep me on the modified stock so there's no shame in that it's fine and a lot of people like just the regular stock from Ambernick. i i don't know maybe it's just <laughs> i need a little bit more flashiness apparently not too much flashiness because i'll die in pac-man oh man I got a comment. Thank you for reading my posts. That was pretty cool. I think I'm going to do that a little bit more. So definitely check out my posts and whatnot. Maybe you can have a, a comment that is featured in the in the video. <laughs> Look, I can suck at this game in mini form, not just on the Dreamcast version. I love this game. I'm terrible at it, but I love it anyway. My only gripe I would say about Moo OS uh, at this moment in time, the only thing that really kind of sticks out to me is the uh, lack of Wi-Fi automatically staying on. Once you shut off the system, the Wi-Fi, if you left it on right before that, you need to turn it back on and you need to hit connect to your home Wi-Fi. So if anybody from the Moo OS team is out there, if there's a way that you can do that, keep that on, just keep Wi-Fi on automatically. That is one feature that Newly has over MooOS that I do enjoy. I don't have to go into settings and just hit connect or turn on the Wi-Fi. I would say really that's about it. Other than making the themes a little more accessible rather than going into the MooOS Discord. Anyway. Those are my thoughts, not yours. So let me know in the comments below if you've used any of these custom firmwares or if you prefer the stock OS straight out of the box from Ambernick or if you're using the modified stock OS, it's not half bad. Let me know in the comments below if any anything that you are having issues with or whatnot or what you're playing on this device because I always love to hear that, that somebody has this device and they're really enjoying it and what game they're being rekindled with because there's tons of them with me. <laughs>
Right now, I would say me, it's Portmaster. I am going through and I'm playing a lot of Trogdor <laughs> because why not? Thanks for watching. Stay awesome, everyone, and go play some games. <laughs>